everyone. Today we've got a black background, which means we're thinking about thinking. And you may be tuning into this channel because you're learning about food science, but we often need to think about other abstract topics in organizational theory or in management to be able to use the food science skills we have effectively. We have talked a lot on this channel about change management and the importance that food scientists have in terms of creating systems change within the organizations they work in. So oftentimes our food scientists are leading the change for food safety systems. So they might be the leader who has to bring about um, implementation of a new food safety uh, program, and they've got to create mobilization and community organizing to get people to work together towards that common goal. In other cases, food scientists might be bringing about an innovation strategy within the company, uh, doing new R&D or doing new quality systems. And um, they may be part of a DMAIC project, which is all about doing er, uh, continuous improvement. Well, in there, the, there's a human aspect to that as well, that you need to get buy-in and you need to get people working together towards that common goal. And so we'll be referring to um, a leader in uh, community organizing. His name is Marshall Gans, and he has a lot of different theories about how we do community organizing. And we're going to uh, take some of these concepts and apply it to different organizations that we may be working with as food scientists. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to use models from Marshall Gans's approach to community organizing and relate it to change management strategy. We'll identify functions of leadership in community organizations. We'll identify elements of mobilization within community leadership. We'll describe Gans's snowflake model for organizational leadership, and we'll describe Gans's narrative model as it applies to change management. So let's just jump in here. Who is Marshall Gans? Well, he is a professor uh, and senior lecturer in leadership, organizing, and civil society at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. And he has a long and um, very colorful history in that he started at Harvard back in 1960. He, I believe he was born in 1943. And he started at Harvard in 1960 and he uh, left Harvard before he graduated because he joined the civil rights movement and he went to Mississippi to join the Freedom School Movement, which was working with um, uh, many disenfranchised uh, people of color in the southern United States to be able to help them participate in uh, political action. And from there, he went on to work with the United Farm Workers Movement uh, with Cesar Chavez. And he was one of the directors of organization and helping people mobilize to be able to get their messages out and to be able to work together towards common goals. And um, most notably, um, recently, Marshall Gans was the coordinator for the Barack Obama political campaign in terms of the community organizing. If you remember back to that period, um, Barack Obama's campaign was notable because of the uh, quite literally thousands upon thousands of volunteers who came together to work towards that common goal of electing Barack Obama. And that idea of being able to um, capture a movement and create that spirit of volunteerism, that willingness to work towards that common goal, is what we want to talk about today. So let's just jump in here. Um, Marshall Gans describes leadership as a practice in that it can be formalized in that many times people have formal structures um, and formal labels that define their leadership. And in other cases, it can be informal, where people provide guidance and mentorship and advice to one another through informal pathways to create leadership structures. Leadership implies that you're taking responsibility for stuff that goes on and so that you're willing to accept when things go right and when things go wrong and be able to work to fix these sorts of things. And so um, within any sort of leadership structure, there has to be an acknowledgement of what you can and uh, what you can fix and what you can't fix and uh, being able to take responsibility and um, communicate to the stakeholders about that responsibility. Leadership is also about enabling others to be able to lead. And this is a really important feature of Marshall Gans's model of leadership is that um, 
as as important as it is to have leaders, that leadership has to have a succession planning that if you want a community to improve, you need to create more leaders who are capable of creating those improvements. And so that enabling piece is really important. Leadership has to be purposeful with a shared goal. And so communicating what that shared um, intent is going to be and what the campaigns of the organization are going to be is important. When I say campaigns, I don't mean political campaigns. A campaign could mean something as simple as we need to implement this new HACCP program within our company. We need to have it done by December. Here are the steps that we need to take. I know the students at Niagara College have been taking um, some modules in project management with, with me. Um, thinking through all of those elements within your Gantt chart to say, here are the thing, here are the steps that we need to accomplish to be able to get to that goal by this deadline. Um, being able to have a purposefulness in that and a, and a, um, a commonality that everyone has that shared purpose, I think is really important as part of leadership to articulate what that shared purpose is. And of course, leadership means that you've got to be able to be open to uncertainty. And that certainly is the case right now in COVID where organizations have to be able to pivot and have to be able to um, move forward with a lot of financial or um, other forms of adversity. And so that creativity and adapt or adaptability is really important part of leadership. Leadership's key function, um, according to Marshall Ganz's uh, writings, is it's a balance between being able to walk in and be critical and to be able to find those opportunities for improvement while still being incredibly hopeful and optimistic about the whole scenario. And so I know for, in my own function as a leader uh, within the food science community in Canada, oftentimes people say, well, you, you just so... You, you just walk in there and say things as they are and you're like, and I'm like, yeah, because I love the community and I really want to see it improve. And unless I can walk in and trust that I can say, um, here's what needs to be improved. I can't, I can't, uh, sit tight within myself. Everyone knows that I'm also the first person. If I walk in and say a criticism personally, that I'm also the first person to reach out my hand and say, here's what I want to do to help fix this. And so that optimism has to balance any sort of criticality. Um, leadership also has to, uh, anytime there is a challenge, there has to be a sense of collaboration in a sense that we want to create capacity in this whole uh, process that oftentimes when there's a challenge, it's easy for leadership to just go in and clean up that challenge really, really quickly versus enabling other people in the process so that they if they were to face that challenge again in the future, would be able to uh, deal with it themselves. And last but not least, leadership has to be that optimist. You have to be fearless and go headlong into the unknown, knowing that something's something good's going to happen. <laughs> the fearless optimism is really, really essential. So, oops, I'm jumping ahead too fast here. So leadership as a practice under Gans's model, he speaks quite widely about this sort of threefold challenge that in leadership, you need to be able to have the challenge of the hands, ensure that people have the skills to complete the task. And if you are, tr as a leader, wanting your organization or your team to be able to do something, you need to provide the skills and the tools and the resources so that that group can complete the task and not just leave them to their own devices. So the aspect of leadership as coaching and leadership as demonstrating, leadership as um, providing benchmarks of what those competencies should be, is really, really critical. Leadership is a challenge of the mind in that you need to be able to take the knowledge resources within your team and turn them into a value proposition. So you need to know who your stakeholders are within your membership and be able to then say, yeah, we can turn your skills and competencies, we can turn your ideas into something of value. And to be able to step outside of a leader as a singular person with those ideas and um, mine the resources of the entire team and, and turn that into value proposition. Last but not least, uh, Gans writes about uh, leadership as a challenge of the heart, to have that courage and hopefulness and to have a sense of empathy when challenges are being faced by the team and by individuals within the team, that the leader has the, the courage to walk in there and 
face those challenges empathetically and uh, with dignity in the entire process. Um, Gans writes about leadership as a developmental continuum and that leadership has to have that capacity building to extend leadership to others. And so often within organizations, you start with uh, participants in that in that continuum as, let's see, oh, my marker is working, as, as consumers where they are participating in an organization, um, just taking and following um, just the lead of what's being there. Then within certain organizations, they move to a promotion type scenario where they are actively, um, actively saying, "This is this is a worthwhile endeavor. I want uh, participation. I want people to engage in this." Moving into a creative space where um, you then become a participant who is um, contributing ideas and. Um, being very active in the participatory process. You could consider this part somewhat somewhat passive in the continuum. And then we start moving into an active mode here. I suppose the active does carry over into the governing. Um, but creating and serving implies that within the organization, you're taking an active role and you're stepping up and finding new opportunities to uh, mobilize and engage even further. Moving into the governing, this is where you're starting to have a formalized structure within the organization. But I, I, I left this wing down here because often when we talk about uh, developmental continuums in, in leadership, we often, uh, I often think of the, the final step here is that mentorship and succession. In that within really effective organizations, there's always going to be an, an element of taking all of these skills in um, leadership con uh, continuity and being able to develop new members of the organization, new members of the community to take on these, these advancing uh, roles because Inevitably, within any organization, there needs to be renewal. There needs to be new people coming in and being part of the entire process. You can't just have everyone within your organization down on the passive end. You need to develop leadership from within the organization so that you have that continual um, that continual renewal within within the organization itself. And that that aspect of mentorship and succession planning is really, really critical as a at, at part of that uh, governing and formalization component. Leadership is a constituency continuum. And this is where it's, it's really interesting. When you think of different organizations, and I realize that a lot of Marshall Gans's writing was about um, volunteer community organizations. There is an aspect of constituency. And what do I mean by that? We'll just dump, jump right in here. He speaks about the concept of belonging in a customer model. And as a member of the community, I buy services from the organization and things are done for me in a transactional process. So often if you think about, uh, I'm thinking about some of the different food science organizations that are out there. You you could belong to an organization and, and get a magazine and, and um, sit in a webinar. Um, and that's a sort of customer service model where you are buying services from the organization and things are done in a transaction versus belonging in a client model where you are actively involved and you, you advocate for what you want, but the leaders are still providing the services. And so a client model changes the practice in terms of the engagement, but it's still has a, a major component within that within that continuum on the passive end of consumers and boosters. But there's there is that dialogue where where the clients, the the, the members within the organization are out advocating saying this is what I want. And then last but not least, he speaks about the the citizen or constituent model of uh, leadership uh, within the constituency continuum. And this is where within an organization, Members are part of a community working together on shared goals, making choices through collective initiatives. And if I can really frame how does this fit into leadership within 
any sort of organization, there needs to be a dialogue with the constituency, a dialogue with the people within that, with that, within that community to say, what is our model? And how do we foster leadership? And in many cases, there are legitimate reasons why organizations may be focused on a customer model. It may just be worth having a leadership team that delivers services and people can buy into those services. And in other cases, you do need to have a sense of community, uh, community agency um, such that the entire community is working towards that shared goal. And that's where um, that citizen constituent model is really, really interesting. Um, I think of uh, jumping back to food, uh, food organizations within organizations where you see the sort of um, customer service model. Oftentimes, I think I'm thinking of implementation of food safety systems. You can often uh, using the customer model, you can have a, a management team that just oversees food safety and they they send out SOPs to the manufacturing floor and fantastic. Um, they can have some HR managers and uh, uh, lead hands go out there and say, here's how we're implementing it. End of story. And that's a very customer oriented model versus a citizen constituent oriented model. You could be engaging the members of your community, perhaps during a lunch break or a team scrum. You could say, hey, we need to implement food safety systems. Here's our overall idea. Give us some feedback. How does this work in your daily function? And give the people a few minutes to give some feedback. Now suddenly you've changed the metric. In terms of the, the community working together on that shared goal, making choices through collective initiatives, you have engaged the entire team, even in a very simple way as just saying, hey, everyone on the team, you need to implement this, but I need to make sure as the leader, I am providing content that is relevant to you and your job can you give me some feedback to say, is this working? Is this not? And show me as the leader, how do we make this better together? That collective initiative aspect is really important. Within other organizations, um, engaging, engaging the membership in a meaningful dialogue as part of that continuum of leadership is really, really essential for success. There are aspects of, of building social capital within organizations. I know we've talked a lot about, um, we've spent a lot of time back in the fall on uh, theories with W. Edwards Deming about the idea of pride in workmanship within organizations. And pride is a manifestation of social capital and that um, people have a sense of purpose and a sense of, a sense of identity that comes from the, the work that's being done. And uh, social capital could be a sense of belonging or a, 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 an aspect of networking, a feeling of trust and safety within, within their role, a sense of reciprocity that I will do stuff because you have done stuff for me. Participation, that you feel like you are belonging within that organization and that you have a role to play that's important. Social capital could be citizen power or proactivity. I realize I'm, I'm speaking about uh, Marshall Gans, who wrote a lot about um, community organizing within activist groups, but these same principles work in food manufacturing systems as well. And that, that social capital just, it, it relates back to so many elements of uh, creating pride and creating a sense of belonging. I can't, I can't stress enough that that sense of belonging is an important quadrant in this model here. Now, leadership in Marshall Gans's writings often speaks about this chain of fostering relationships that contribute to volunteerism and contribution. And so when you create leadership and that you um, have a cascading format, that you are using the ability to delegate tasks out to more people to foster leadership, obviously supporting their hands and heart and mind aspect that you that you're delegating to people who have enough capability and enough capability with support. These are zones of proximal development. There's another YouTube video about that, um, but cascading that leadership capability to people so that they can grow and they can become something bigger in their contribution to the community. That cascading format leadership is really essential, especially within community organizations, but within any organization to give 
if you as, go back to my food safety example, if you are giving people who have um, interest in uh, growing within the company, give them the opportunity to lead within appropriate structures, it gives them the chance to advance their career. And it gives them the chance to have a greater challenge and a greater sense of satisfaction, obviously within that zone of proximal development to give them an appropriate challenge with the right um, skills and the right scaffolding and the right mentorship so that they will succeed at the skill. But that chain effect of leadership as building on an organization and that social capital is really important in, in Gans's writing. This is the snowflake model. And the idea in Gans's leadership model is that Yes, you might have to have people who are the point people within organizations. However, within each organization, there's that capability of cascade leadership, being able to delegate and work within teams down this model. And so it's, it's the concept of what's called delegated management, that yes, you will have someone who is that person who inevitably has to take leadership and responsibility, but they then are able to delegate within that to others who have the capability of delegating capabilities and, and, and defining exactly what tasks need to be done. That delegation can ripple out very effectively so that you can accomplish much more through the small efforts of many, many people. Leadership is a relationship in Gans's writing as well, in that any time that you are a leader, you need to be participating in the relational aspect, that you want to make sure that you are giving your members attention. You're showing interest in them as, as people and in them as unique people with a wide variety of interests and a wide variety of needs. You want to show that you're exploring um, opportunity and exchanging a sense of reciprocity with them, that you... You are there to help them, but they also have a role to help. And that's how you are able to build out commitment within that relational aspect. Now, in any sort of community leadership, uh, Gans writes about the idea of campaigns, that you are building resources towards a shared goal or activity. And I know um, Marshall Gans wrote extensively about uh, political campaigning and uh, campaigning with union organization in mind. However, that idea of campaigning can also work in any sort of um, food safety initiative, uh, any sort of quality improvement initiative, think DMAIC, um, and having, having a goal to make a quality improvement within an organization. It could be all about innovation as well, launching of a new product. That can be a campaign within a food company. And so building resources towards that shared goal or activity, the, there are obviously the, uh, the tangible and technical resources that are needed, but you also need to build out those social, the social capital within the organization to get that done. And so leadership implies that you have that social capital to be able to go and call on someone to say, hey, I need a favor from you. Hey, can I talk to you about co-packing relationships? Hey, can I uh, get some intel on ingredients from you? Hey, can I pick up a phone call and talk to the people at the CFIA about something? That, that aspect of a campaign, going back to our project management, there are those technical uh, touch points, but along that entire spectrum, there is all of the social capital that's invisible behind it that you as the organizer need to be able to mobilize people to fulfill each of those different campaign elements within that project to get to the goal. We've talked about this continuum before, but within many organizations, you have to have that campaign of how do you build on this active membership component? How do we, in a change management scenario, go from uh, low level of commitment to much more active commitment within the organization. And so how do we link out to that uh, active, af uh, pardon me, active membership so that we are engaging with our, with our stakeholders as effectively as possible? Last but not least, Marshall Gans writes a lot about the importance of narrative and I have I have other content that speaks about Gans's narrative and you can find videos of Gans speaking specifically about the narrative himself. Um, but the idea is within 
Gans's model for community leadership, an important function is the ability to tell a story. And the idea is that you link the story to your own personal experience, you link the story to the community experience, and then you turn that into an action plan. And my kid just said that the milk at the corner store it now costs five sixty. <laughs> Long story short, you have to be able to tell an effective story so that you can engage the population within your stakeholders. And I encourage you to take a look and find out more about Gans's narrative because there's lots and lots of resources. The idea of being able to tell effective stories is so important to convince people to join your movement. So I'll leave you with one last slide here, a quote from Marshall Gans's book, Why David Sometimes Wins, Leadership Organization and the Strategy in the California Farm Worker Movement. His quote, which you'll find resonates with so much of the content in this channel, challenging the status quo takes commitment, courage, imagination, and above all, dedication to learning. And I appreciate you sticking it out to the end of this um, slideshow. Dedication to learning is a theme that keeps re-emerging and re-emerging in all of this content that we talk about. I'm really pleased to be working with you as, as you dedicate to learning more about how to be an effective leader in your organizations. And you know where to find me if you have questions. I love engaging with you and um, fielding different questions. And we'll have some more videos coming up real soon. Take care and have fun learning about leadership. Cheers.